Hi, my name is Willie Shee and I teach at the Harvard Business School. I'm going to talk to you today about what we have learned about supply chains from the global pandemic. What do we mean by a supply chain? I mean that entire string of producers and logistics providers that start all the way from the raw materials going all the way to the store. Now, sometimes when I ask people, hey, do you know where that product came from? They'll say, oh, I got it at Amazon, or I got it at Walmart, or I got it at the grocery store. Well, that's your personal supply chain. Okay, but we want to look farther back, going all the way to the raw materials, and how did that get converted into products? Now, I'm going to tell this story, starting with toilet paper. Uh, well, you say, well, that's kind of funny. Well, when I heard this in early in the pandemic about first Japan and Hong Kong, and then Singapore and Australia, people hoarding toilet paper, I said, well, this is the perfect thing to write a story about because you really don't need to know a whole lot about toilet paper to envision what the supply chain will look like. Well, first of all, it's a product everybody understands, which is good. And the other thing we know about it is demand is pretty constant. Uh, it's not like there's seasons of the year when you consume more toilet paper, right? So stable demand, next thing we know is it's not very expensive, okay, but it actually takes up a lot of volume. So uh, that means this product is not very tradable, right? Products that are tradable are ones that you can make far away from where they're consumed. You can ship them around the world because for the amount of value they contain, uh, shipping costs are a relatively small por proportion. But toilet paper not being expensive and being kind of bulky to ship, what you really want to do is make it relatively close to where it's going to be purchased. So, for example, most countries are self-sufficient in toilet paper. China is the world's largest manufacturer of toilet paper. It's also probably the world's largest consumer of toilet paper, but they make mostly their own. In the U.S., we're the second largest manufacturer of toilet paper, and most of it is made within our borders. Maybe some wood chips will come from some place like Canada, or maybe South America, or maybe some of the Nordic countries, but by and large, the factories are close to major markets. Okay, well, what's the next thing you would think, uh, not knowing a lot about toilet paper, but knowing that there's stable demand, you could pretty much guess that factories are going to be sized, understanding that the demand is stable, right? Because I'm not going to put on a lot of capacity if uh, there isn't a season where I have to make a lot of more, a lot more all of a sudden. So why were we surprised that stores were running out? Uh, and, you know, I got a lot of questions after I wrote this piece about, well, why couldn't factories just crank up their production, right? It shouldn't be a surprise because demand is level and you make your capacity decisions based on that demand. But then the question is, aren't people using less of it? because they're not going to offices, schools, hotels, restaurants? Yes, but, okay, and this is where the problem is. First of all, it's not easy to ramp up capacity if your factory has been sized for that stable demand, and then you have to transport it, right? So if you suddenly have to make twice as much, you need twice as many trucks. Even though they may be not a great distance from the stores, you still need uh, more. The next problem is you have to make the right stuff. One of the things about people not going to hotels and restaurants and schools, uh, so we didn't need a lot of toilet paper there, but the institutional toilet paper, as it's referred to, is different from the consumer product. The consumers tend to prefer multiply, they like softer uh, toilet paper, so they'll, you know, the manufacturers will uh, have machines set up to make that multiply or uh, make it fluffier, okay? And the institutions, they basically want it as cheap as possible, so it's a very different product. The next problem is you have to get the right packages for the right stores. Imagine if you're buying toilet paper at Walmart. It'd be kind of strange to have it in Safeway or Kroger or Whole Foods packaging. And then not only do you have to have the right product in the right packaging, you have to have the right roll count, okay, maybe a one pack or a four pack or an eight pack, or if people, you saw people uh, buying these 36 roll packs at Costco, you have all this different variety. 
So our real problem was excessive variety. Uh, so, and we've seen this during the pandemic with other products as well. If you walked into the store, sometimes the store had too much of this flavor, not enough of this. So what's the cause of this problem? Well, the cause is that we as consumers have come to expect a lot of variety. Stores talk about stock keeping units, SKUs. So we talk about how many SKUs of toilet paper do I need to have in a grocery store? And I was talking to one person who was in the supply chain who said, well, you know, there are almost 60 SKUs that they had to deal with. Uh, you know, that means 60 different brands, packages, packages sizes, roll counts. And, you know, this is a problem that is actually very common in the grocery store today. I don't know if you've looked at the toothpaste shelves lately or any of the personal care products where you have not only a wealth of brands, large variety of different sizes, and uh, a, lot of different, uh, a lot of different choice. Well, choice is nice, but it comes with a cost. The retailers have to forecast which one of these SKUs are going to sell, how many, how fast. Then on top of that, as we go back in the supply chain, manufacturers have to forecast which ones the retailers are going to order. And guess what? The likelihood of everybody getting all those forecasts correct is nil. So when we have a crisis like what we've been through, it kind of lowers the water level and exposes all the rocks, like all the forecasting errors, the difficulty is of forecasting correctly. Now, you could say if everybody in the country only used one type of toilet paper in one type of package in one brand and it was the same in hotels and schools as we use it at home we might not have seen these shortages because people could quickly reallocate those supplies but how much fun would life be like that okay so now you've had your first lesson on supply chain and as you can see you really didn't need to know a whole lot to make a sense of it that's why I wrote this article on toilet paper, and now people think I'm the world's expert on toilet paper.